Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turner speaking to Yvette Monreal about season two of Stargirl debuting August 10th on The CW. Thank you for doing this. Welcome to the show. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you about I, season two. I know. It's so exciting. I mean, has it hit you that it's finally going to be out there? Like, it's crazy. I mean, it hasn't really hit me yet. I know it's two weeks till the air date, but mm-hmm. I mean, it was so much fun to film. So I, I'm excited that all our hard work is going to be out there for the world to see. It's really, really good. And it's darker this season. So it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Well, you know, season one ends like a lot of things happen a lot of characters uh are not going to be around for season two uh, but uh you know what's kind of going through your mind when you're renewed for season two and you know you you kind of have this idea of the character arcs and all the the growth because we see it with even the a lot like the character growth is insane but what's going through your mind like before going to film season two yvette um, for season two, it's like, okay, let's get back in shape. Let's uh, get the <laughs> boxing skills a little, uh, you know, up to date. Um, it's a lot of fun. I, I have a lot of fun and I look forward to going back every time. Mm-hmm. I can't believe we're going back for a third time already. It's amazing. I mean, I have, I have an amazing group. Um, of, I have a, an amazing cast that I work with. I have amazing writers. Our showrunner is unbelievable. And, they really pay attention to detail with like our personal growth yep. and incorporate that with our characters, which I feel like I've never really felt before. So I'm really appreciative of the team that we have. It's so much fun. One of the things I loved about season one is it is an ensemble cast and there's a lot of characters in it. And, you know, some characters have their moments and some characters are around more than others, but I just love how everybody has huge moments in season one of star girl. Do you know what I mean by that? There's like, everyone has like a moment, even if they're not a main character, it's so great how it's like divided all the amazing moments in season one for star. Is it safe to say we're going to see that happen as well in season two? Oh, definitely. I feel like, I mean, touching back on what I had just said, like we're so lucky to have, writers that pay such close attention and they give each character their own arc, not just, you know, the, I mean, the show is called star girl. It is about star girl, but they also like let us develop our own stories. And it also gives room to people. Sorry, my dog. (laughs) It gives room for people to relate to different stories, not just one story, but like there's different arcs, different characters that can be related to like, my little niece, her favorite, her favorite character is Beth and she's just like Beth. And so I love that they touch base on, on how she, she's growing up and the person that she is and the person she's becoming. Um, you get to see different perspectives and I, I, I feel like you don't see that a lot. So we're really lucky. And this is a simple question for you. What's it like playing a superhero? I got to ask that. <laughs> I have to. I mean, it's amazing. (laughs) It's a dream come true for me. I felt like I wasn't going to be able to do this until later, later on in my career. Um, I didn't know if I was deserving. I'm just kidding. No, Um, it's been really fun. And I I can't believe I'm a superhero, honestly. (laughs) I think about it. I'll be driving. Oh, my gosh, my dog. I'm sorry. I'll be driving to the floor, and I have these random thoughts of, like, wow, I can't believe I'm a superhero. I can't believe I'm going back to work soon. Putting on the suit and it's like, is this real life? (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. There is definitely like a wow, like a wow factor to it. Like, oh my God, this is real. What Um, was it like when you saw the suits for the first time? Like you and Cam, like what were you guys saying? Like when you saw the suits for the first time? I'm curious about that. The first time I saw the suit was actually through um, a drawing. Okay. They drew it up for us first, and they had our face and everything, which was really cool. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's going to be me. <laughs> I was so excited. And then they showed us the fabric, and 
it's cool how they really pay attention to detail to the fabric. There's little scratches on my suit and little hourglasses on Cam's, little moons on um, Angelica's and stars on Courtney's, Courtney's, Brex. So it's just, it just feels so special. They really make us feel so special because everything is suited for you. You know, um, the suit doesn't fit anybody but me. It's, it's for my body type. They do everything. They even did like a, like a head cast for my, for my head, for the helmet. So <laughs> I feel bad for my stunt, my stunt person sometimes has to wear the helmet and, she, and it, my head's so big, like a little bit forward, but you know. Without going into super big De uh, like details or spoilers i mean you did mention on the top i mean season two is going to be darker which i think if people kind of see that like pe i think people are just really excited for season two but i think people like are i think people will will, will like will will be open to that they want to see these characters kind of evolve and all this crazy stuff happening especially where left le uh, left's off what can you tell us about what to expect in season two um, but with your character as well, specifically, without diving into spoilers that much. I mean, <clears throat> there's the big bad wolf Eclipso, which everyone knows about. And mm -hmm. he feeds off of um, people's fears and insecurities. And that's something that every character is going to be dealing with because, I mean, he's, he's just like taken over. And so we have to, I guess it's just like that. That's the main thing. We have to like not only fight this villain, but also like navigate through these emotions that we, that were like tucked away, like deep into our past, like traumas that we've never even touched on. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. And um, I mean, we get to see new, new heroes. You mm -hmm. see Green Lantern's daughter for one, we see the pink pen. Um, and then new villains, the shade and of course, Eclipso, who I just touched on. But, um, yeah, with Yolanda, she touches base on a lot of her, I mean, it's really heavily inflicted, like her faith yep. because she doesn't have the JSA to lean on at least in the beginning, because, you know, she just killed Eclipso. She doesn't want anybody to know that she's really dealing with this kind of turmoil yet. She's not comfortable to say like, Hey, it's almost like a, like she doesn't want to be vulnerable, you yeah. know, she doesn't want to show her, her weakness. And, um, yeah. So she goes, she goes to her faith a lot in this, in this season and, and dealing with if she's going crazy or if brainwave is taking over, she has all these emotions that she has to kind of sort out. And, and not only that, but there's also the villain that she's dealing with. So it's a lot, it's a lot to take in. It's coming out this year. And it's going to be a lot different than last year because last year it came out during the pandemic and, yeah. you know, a lot of people were just at home watching shows and Stargirl, I feel like is going to become one of those, like I talked to other cast members, like one of those pandemic shows where everyone was watching. It was a big deal. Um, yeah. It's, it's like, so you, you're like kind of prepared a little bit to what to expect because it was crazy when it like drop last year are you kind of preparing yourself mentally a little bit when it drops finally in august 10th like people have been craving this for a long time oh my gosh yeah <laughs> and i think the cool thing about about the show like if anyone knows jeff like jeff throws in elements where you don't expect things to happen and like i mean you guys saw season one henry died who would have expected that we miss our boy um, but yeah, there's like elements of surprise and, and I'm definitely prepping myself and my whole family. Like we all want to watch it. It's, it's really exciting. It's like season one was one movie. Yeah. One movie. And then season two, it's like <laughs> another movie. It's, it's a 13 episode movie. It's amazing. It, yeah. But it, like the thing is the scale of it. Like I remember talking to Jake and Neil last year, I mean the scale of it, like especially like episode one of season one, it's like, mm -hmm. It's so big scale and so much is happening and it's like, what is going on? Like, it does feel like a movie. It's like you guys are going in and shooting a blockbuster movie, but it's 13 episodes. I mean, Jeff said it. He's like, if we're not going to do it right, we're not going to do it at all. And I mean, I give big props to our stunt team, you know, Walter Garcia, who coordinates all the fights. Like, that's a big element to the show and like a big wow factor. So, 
um, we're really lucky to have our stunt team. I mean, my my stunt double, Kara, um, Kara, she's so amazing and she's so skilled. Like there's one, I don't know, I've seen like small stunts, you know, if like you get punched in the face, whatever, but the level of the skill that they have and that they have to like, the preparation is insane. I wish you guys could see it. I'm gonna like BTS it, watch season three. So you guys can well, see. Well, yeah, that, that is a cool thing too, like the social media interactions. But you know, it's no surprise they're saying we're in the golden age of television, and I agree. And a lot yeah. of people are saying we're in the golden age of television event because the quality of the content, the writing, the cinematography, and I agree with that 100%. That is like center of the attention, I agree. What I believe truly is the factor behind us being the golden age of television is the access and the global aspect of it. The fact that these shows are watched and followed and tweeted about and Instagram posted all over the world. Like there are fans of Stargirl from all over the globe. Like that to me is just sensational to see. Like it is so amazing to see that there's countries all over the world that love Stargirl. Like isn't that crazy? It's so crazy. And honestly, I'm so proud of Jeff because this is his pride and joy. Mm -hmm. I mean, going into it season one, I remember him talking about how special it was to him and how it was such an important project because it really like pays tribute to his sister. Yes. In peace. And, you know, she, I, there's like such a big level of, be, of proud, proudness that I have. And, yeah, I'm I'm really lucky to be a part of this. And and the fans, the scale, like you said, the scale of, of the fans and how they're so, like, they follow everything. They pay attention to everything. I remember one time I posted a picture with Issa, the one who plays Green Lantern's daughter, and they were, like, finding all these little clues on her hand and, like, a new ring that she had. And I'm like, oh, my Lord, this is this is on another level. So Well, they also don't mess around with the Yolanda Wildcat, like, edits and memes. Like, they don't mess around. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, who are these people? They need to join, <laughs> they need to join the marketing marketing team because they their edits are amazing. I love, like, the comic book edits that they put behind our pictures and, like, it's the best. It's the, the best. The ever. quickness yeah. blows my mind too. Cause I remember like I was watching Stargirl week after week. Right. Mm -hmm. And like there would be, especially what we, we all know what happens to Henry. Right. I mean, right after it was on, like everything was pouring in all the edits. Like it, it did. It seemed like it was like 20 minutes after it, what it came on air. Like it was crazy how quick it was. It was, was. So, it was so perfect to that song. And then of course, Jake, he had to, play on his guitar the same song of his character passing like it was perfect oh my god but you and all knew right because you're reading the script right like characters like him and, and neil like they they you all knew it was like a one season thing right like so yeah, but it was jake, still i'm sure emotional like when you finally like, saw it back absolutely for sure yeah jake knew he um <laughs> he had to know because of his scheduling purposes yeah. and like relocation kind of situation so i mean him and Jeff had a whole had a whole talk about it and it was so sad that we didn't know how it was going to happen. That was like the big surprise. I'm like, "Oh my gosh." And he just he just looks up at me and he's like <laughs> <laughs> the rocks just fall. It was That was the talk of the town. Like people were talking about that episode for a long time. I feel like that was just one moment that kept like got got brought up. Like in tags, yeah. like pop turn of was doing a lot of interviews with Stargirl cast members at the time, so we're getting tagged in all like the memes and edits and stuff, and it's all about Henry, and it's just like it was just like an overflow. He um, didn't want us to leave. He was so good, and he's such a good, he's such a bright light on set, and he's so, he has such good energy and always riles. Like he's just so great. We we loved him so much. It was so sad when he actually. I mean, you spend months with these people, you know, and yeah. Even if you expect it, it's kind of like we don't expect it. And it's just like... But I do have to say, too, like, Neil Jackson, who played Icicle, I mean, I yeah. will have to say, like, he was a bad guy, he was a villain and everything, but he arguably is one of the coolest villains yes. of all time. And when he was gone, I was kind of like, oh, man. Like, I was kind of bummed. Like, I was like, we're not going to see Icicle anymore. Definitely. I know he actually was my favorite villain uh, season one. Like, he just played... Just the way he played his character too. It was so smooth. Like yeah. ice was in his blood, man. The dinner <laughs> scene where she finds out he's ice cold and like it's very hot, but like <laughs> it's 
Oh my best, god, yeah. so good. Do you remember? Do you remember the the scene where Icicle, um, like the wizard comes with his wand and he goes shh, 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 with the like, yes, he puts him out. Yeah, best. <laughs> Nothing but everything at the same time. I loved it. It was great. It was so. There's oh, you're making. I can't wait for season two. Like let's, let's <laughs> right now. Yvette, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turnative. I really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you so much. This was such a fun interview. I appreciate you taking the time out, too. For sure. Uh, August 10th, it's coming out, Yvette? Yes, August 10th, it comes out on the CW. Amazing. And, yeah, yeah. Well, this has been Pop Turn at YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Yvette Monreal and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.